Hello, Southside. Welcome to another Testimony Tuesday. I'm really excited about our uh, video for today because I've got Kathy Kuhn here with me. Um, Kathy, you and your husband Scott have been at Southside. You're fairly new, right? right. Yeah, yeah about, about, a about a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. In some new, ways it definitely. feels like a lot longer and some ways a lot shorter. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah. especially with all this COVID time is Kind of, we're in a time warp right now anyway, right? Yeah, so. totally. Everybody keeps telling me that they keep thinking we're in, in March, especially with this weird spoken yes. weather we've been having. It feels uh -huh. like March. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but uh, Kathy, you and Scott, you lead a uh, small group, right? Thank and you. Uh, you guys are just excellent shepherds of your people. Yes. You guys have, you know, I won't go into detail on this, but you've had some real challenges with, um, you know, some health of some people in the group. And yes. they've been so impressed with how you guys have uh, carried the load and the burden for, for that group. So well done. Thank you for your service. Well, it's, uh, it's also Kathy and Dean Wiles that are mm -hmm. co-shepherding with us. And we tag team off of each other and appreciate each other to have. We've both learned a lot from each other too. So, oh, but it's, awesome. it's, it's great to have a team. Right? Yeah. Pardon me? It's great to have a team. It, it is. We really need that. And our group started in September and it's just been the most amazing journey. Wow. And we've gotten to know each other on a very deep level and just love each other, all of us. So yeah. we can be very transparent. That's very cool. And that's, that's a good thing. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, and then one other thing that you're fairly new to is you volunteer with the Billy Graham Association. So, yes. so just tell us a little bit about what you do with that group. Sure. So I started that in March or actually January. I applied to be what's called a Billy Graham chaplain. And those are volunteers who you go through an interview process, an application. I had to get recommendations and kind of talk about my life story, to tell you the truth. And then what that is, is it's, it's two things. It started out being that I can be deployed to really anywhere in the country or the world, if I choose, to go on uh, these natural disasters that Samaritan's Purse is working in, or sadly, man-made disasters like shootings so if you look at the last three years of what samaritan's purse and billy graham have been doing sadly more of them have been mass shootings than natural disasters around the country or the world mm -hmm. so then the chaplains go and i haven't actually done this yet but we are deployed to different areas of the country to pray for people mm -hmm. and to work hand in hand with all the samaritan's purse volunteers and uh, Duran and uh, John Gauz actually got me onto this. I met them through your Thursday Samuel class. Yeah. So we got to know them. And we went to lunch one day after the Samuel class. And we got talking about what we're doing. And they started telling us about it. And I got really excited about it. Mm. So they actually are on a deployment right now in Michigan in the yeah. flooding there. So I've been hearing from them. But I haven't gone on a deployment yet for various reasons. But in the middle of all this, and this is just a God thing, mm -hmm. Franklin Graham decided to do this national prayer line. Mm -hmm. And that started in March because of COVID. And now, so then the chaplains, if we wanted to take additional training, we took a training to then be on the prayer line and to answer prayer requests. And so since March, I think there's maybe a thousand of us that are on this prayer line. And I want to say we're up to maybe 120,000 calls and many, many, many people who have come to Christ through those calls. Mm -hmm. So some are people want prayer for various things. Some are, I want to know Jesus. And then you start talking to them and next thing you know, they accept Christ. So wow. I've um, been blessed to actually have been able to bring a number of people to Christ since March. Wow. And I, I, I kind of consider it my job now. I'm looking for purpose. I just retired when we moved over here and I wanted to have a job. Mm -hmm. And so I'm on it maybe a couple hours a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a huge growing experience uh, in terms of there are a lot of people going through a lot of stuff in this country, as I know you know, as a pastor, and you've heard all these stories, but that's I, I've known that and yet I haven't known it on such a personal level yeah as I've been hearing the stories of people around the country there's a lot of fear as mm -hmm. you can imagine a lot of uncertainty yeah 
and a lot of people that don't have Christ as their foundation and are looking for that. Right. So. Well, that's really cool. And I, you know, I think, um, you know, I th when I think of you and I think of uh, John and Duran, as you mentioned, and yeah. you know, wanting to volunteer with stuff like this, where you're really going to what you're moving toward the suffering and the pain. Yes. And, it's just so, it's so different from the way of the world. You know, we're so, you know, we, we are maybe often fascinated by the suffering and the pain, but we often want to be separate from it and we want to flee yes. in the other direction. And I just yes. think it's, it's an amazing work of the spirit in your lives that you guys have been able to say, no, we want to go toward it and we want to bring the, the light of Jesus yes. Christ into this dark situation. So I think yes. that's really awesome. Thanks for sharing about well, I learned even, I think, is it 2 Timothy 1, 7? I might not have that quite right, but God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power. And when I started on this prayer line, I had fear. Mm -hmm. I, I had fear. I didn't, you know, you never know who's calling and something. You have angry callers. You have abusive callers. Mm -hmm. You have all kinds of stuff. You don't know. It's like a Russian roulette. Who's going to, you know, who's going to be on this phone line? Yeah. And I had, I had fear, so I have that verse as a sticky note on my desktop to look at. That's great. And then, you know how God works throughout your life to prepare you for things, and you don't know it at the time? Mm -hmm. But this prayer line came out of nowhere because of COVID. Yeah. And I don't feel that fear anymore. And I know when I go on a deployment, being on the prayer line actually prepared me for not really having that fear on a deployment, I have a lot more like, let's, let's go do this. God's got yeah. this. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And I love that too, that, you know, I know so many servants, just people who really are gifted to, to serve and to, um, to do things like that. And yet the, um, that idea of having the verse in front of you to remind you why, why I do this and why I can do this. Yes. Why it's possible. I don't have to be afraid or to be intimidated. Um, yes. That's really cool. So yes, awesome. absolutely. It's the Holy Spirit. I have to lean on the Holy Spirit a hundred percent when I'm on those calls. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, on behalf of uh, Southside, thank you for doing what you're doing. That's amazing. Oh. And, and we are we are blessed to call you one of our own that you're out there doing that. So, uh, so I, I love this church and the, the people in this church are a huge inspiration to me. So yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, on that note, then let's, uh, let's see um, how we might inspire anybody watching this and let's talk about kind of your uh, faith journey, Kathy. So just tell us, first of all, how did you first become a Christian? Well, this will be, you'll see the irony in all of this, or again, maybe just God, right? But I, I grew up in definitely a Christian home. Um, my parents, Ray and Carolyn Hunter, who are in this church and have been forever, they, I have to say, gave me a, a very happy childhood. And we attended uh, Hamlin Park Presbyterian mm -hmm. for many years. And that's not far from where I live now. So things have kind of come full circle. I was in the youth group there. I have to say, and my parents will 100% say this as well, during, this was during the 70s, and when I was in, say, the high school youth group there, the Bible wasn't really a thing mm -hmm. in that time for various reasons. So the youth group, I learned a lot of other things, but I don't remember really opening up a, a Bible. Mm -hmm. So that just is, that is what it is. I wasn't, I didn't know a lot about the Bible. I definitely didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus, but I learned a lot of really great things during those years and had some good friends. Then, and this is the interesting part of my life story, I guess, is late in my teens, and I don't remember the date, I, I think maybe 78 or so, Billy Graham came to Spokane and Joe Albee Stadium. And our church was even involved in that crusade and whatnot. I went to that. And I went down to the stadium floor in that Billy Graham crusade and accepted Jesus at that point in time. Wow. Through Billy Graham. That's amazing. And so now yeah. you're you yeah. know, serving with the Billy Graham Association. Yeah. And, and yeah. Life just really does come full circle. So yeah. that's, that's the moment in time. But I have to say it didn't really stick. So I, you know, I lived my, went to college, lived my 20s. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I 
you know, I maybe attended church off and on, but I really wasn't very close to God during that point in time. And I graduated, moved to Seattle, started working and pretty much climbed the corporate ladder in the CPA world during those years and large accounting firms. And I was married then. I was married to actually a police officer mm. who is in Scott. So the yeah. person before Scott. Yeah. And he wasn't very close to God at all mm. and had had an upbringing that for various reasons kind of took him away from God or turned him off to God, I should say, mm. in his schooling and his upbringing. And so that was tough during that point in time. And so long story short, by the end of, and, and as a police officer, that's a very, very tough thing to do. He was a great, is a great police officer. Mm -hmm. But they can tend to go through depression and incredibly hard times because they're around kind of the dark side of life often. Yeah. So through that, he had tougher times in life and maybe went through depression. I'm not quite sure, but long story short, by the time we were in our late 20s, he wanted to end the marriage and mm -hmm. he wanted out. That struck me just completely blindsided. Mm -hmm. And I, I look back now and I think, wow, I should have been, you know, a much better job of paying more attention to warning signs and communication, not being so caught up in my career and that type of thing, honestly. So I was blindsided, but long story short, he left. And that, I was about 30 by then, that just devastated me completely. I, you know, that's one of those things, life-changing, where you just don't picture that happening right. in your life, but okay, here we are. Mm -hmm. And I was devastated, didn't really have a super strong foundation in Christ at that time to even really know how to cope with it. But yeah. Somewhere in there, in my early 30s, then in the work I was doing by then in the CPA world, I, I worked in mergers and acquisitions, and I helped, I helped people purchase and sell companies. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys I was helping by a company, his name was Steve Roberts, and we worked together about nine or ten months, because it takes a long time to work through what you need to do to buy a company. Mm -hmm. And so we spent a lot of time together during that time. And somewhere in there, we got to know each other more. I didn't realize it, but basically he was witnessing to me during mm -hmm. that point in time. He was a BSF discussion leader. Wow. And so this was going on, but we just had this great working relationship. And at some point in time, I started saying, well, what is this BSF thing and all that? And so he's told me about it. I started going. Yeah. And so after three or four, I went to BSF for probably three, four or five years in the 90s. Mm -hmm. But very early on, I then learned what the Bible was. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned about a personal relationship with Christ. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, that, oh, I, what I was going to say is a few sermons back, Dave talked about how the gospel didn't really make sense to him when he would open his Bible. And then all of a sudden, right. when he accepted Christ and it, it all became so clear, that's exactly what happened to me in BSF. That relationship just clicked mm -hmm. and the word started to jump off the page. Mm -hmm. So I would say it was in my early thirties where all of a sudden I thought, okay, okay. And yeah. then life, you know, after that life started to just change. And yeah. uh, so that's, I think it's kind of a two part thing in my life. It was the Billy Graham crusade, but then it was going through really an incredibly devastating experience. Yeah. And then finding BSF and learning about the Bible. So yeah. no, it's a, that's really interesting. And I think so often our stories of, um, you know, our, how our lives have changed through Christ do come in little stages, you know, like yeah. usually yeah. And it's hard to, you know, necessarily pin down, you know what happened in each one but you know over time when you look back that there has been a change that's made a difference that's been made and i think yes that's yeah really important. yeah so if um i don't know yeah. um maybe we can go back to that to that billy graham crusade for a minute so mm -hmm. what what do you remember of that moment do you what was it that compelled you to go forward and no wrong answer here just <laughs> i'm curious 
You know, it's foggy enough now since I was 18 and I just turned 60. It's somewhat foggy. I have a memory of walking down those stairs mm. at the stadium. And what prompted me to get up out of my seat must have been the Holy Spirit. But I, you know, I just loved listening to Dr. Graham. And I, there must have been something at that point in time where the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit was touching me. The only thing I can think of, but it's... It's not like one of those, oh, I just remember it so clearly. I just have a, I have a foggy memory, to tell you the truth, of going yeah. down the stairs. I have a foggy memory of standing on the stadium floor, talking to someone, mm -hmm. praying. Uh, but it's not this huge yeah. thing, to tell you the truth. Sure, yeah. No, so, that, that's fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's so often the case, especially in those first decisions that we mm -hmm. tend to make. It's like, I don't really remember... I yeah. remember that I did something, but you know, and yet sometimes there's so much pressure to say, oh, well, it was like this, and the moon looked like this, and <laughs> this person, and you know, yeah. you know it, yeah. seemed like it was more, you know, significant than it was, and yet, yeah. you know, who knows what, what happened, you know, internally. So fast forwarding then to the to the other big decision in your life, what was it about? So it's it's interesting. You were you're saying you were discipled kind of in the workplace, which is I was. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, those are things where you look over your life a little bit, and I'm not that old yet, but I have enough to look back on that. That became kind of a thing for the rest of my life, my, my working career, I should say, my, my business career, in that I learned that from Steve, and I wasn't as hesitant to talk to people or at least be a servant leader in business as the life as as life went on after that yeah. i ended up in the early 2000s forming a practice with a cpa gal from san antonio named gail and that was a god thing too in that even how we met at a conference she was teaching in seattle at the time again i got up out of my chair at the conference who knows what got me to do that i think it was god yeah. And we formed a practice because of meeting each other at a conference that lasted 13 years, employed 20 people. Mm -hmm. And during that time, she taught me servant leadership. I was able to use all of that with our employees and their families. And every day in that workplace was a way to witness, to be honest. And yeah. so a huge wow. part of my life was that type of a thing in the workplace. And I, I still belong to a group of uh, gals, a women's group in Bellevue. We meet on Zoom every week. And the purpose of that small group is uh, work witnessing in the workplace, wow. women in the workplace. And so we've been through years of just how do you do that in the yeah. workplace? So. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. so what I love about that, I am a huge believer in the, uh, um, the value of bringing faith to bear on your work. And um, that's yes. I have loved to talk about, especially, yeah. you know, not limited to, but especially with uh, some of our men's groups, because that seems to be somewhere where it really connects sure. with guys, especially because, yeah. Um, and yet I think that people tend to struggle, um, not tend to, but a lot of people do struggle with um, when their career, when they don't see it as something inherently spiritual, you know, they don't work for a church yes. or a nonprofit. Um, yeah. And I would say that, you know, there's probably some CPAs out there who wonder, how do I oh, yeah. bring oh, my yeah. faith to bear on this? And so... <laughs> I wonder exactly. if I can throw you. I wonder if I can throw you a little curveball here. Just, <laughs> you can yeah. share somebody who's watching this who says, you know, I would love to integrate my my faith with my work that I do, but I don't yes. know how to do it. What would you recommend for someone like that? Well, first of all, you have to completely be yourself. If if you're hypocritical, which you know we're all, I am absolutely a hypocrite on a lot of different fronts. So if you're hypocritical. If you're too, I guess I would say pushy, none of that's going to work. You have to absolutely be yourself. Mm -hmm. And because Jesus modeled servant leadership, what I tried to do was how, how am I just a source of support for our employees over those years, their families were going through different things. Who knows what was going on? I was just there to listen to them, to talk to them, to support them. Oh. 
to really develop a relationship as best as I could with them. Mm -hmm. And now that we no longer have that firm, it was sold. What people have told me after that is they don't miss the work that we did, but they miss those relationships we had because they, they called it a family. We had a family of sorts. Yeah. So you have to be very natural and mostly you're just getting your work done because we had, you know, I routinely work 60 hour weeks. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a crazy time where you're just trying to get your work done, but yeah. there are moments because life is life. And so your employees are going through all these ups and downs. And so you're kind of just there in those moments. Mm -hmm. to listen. Yeah. It's <laughs> not, it's really not rocket science, but if you try to overdo it or you're overthink it, it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna come off as genuine right yeah well, that's so you really have good. to just be yourself yeah well thanks for thanks for yeah. me take you down a detour there, there. oh yeah oh, i know it was such a big part of my life that mm -hmm. and still is i just have different types of jobs now in not not for pay you know but sure. it uh absolutely it was a big part of my life and i think that's a mistake if people don't view that as a, a part of their life to be a witness to other people so yeah for sure for sure well uh, i really enjoyed our conversation today um sure. i'd love to give you a couple lightning round questions here so a little bit more on oh the boy. side yeah. yeah so get ready <laughs> yeah yeah this is what i like to ask everybody and it's um so what is a uh, or who is a preacher a book or a song that has that has encouraged you in your walk with Jesus lately? A preacher, a book, or a song? Well, I, I would have to say two things. The trio of you guys at Southside have been incredibly inspiring to me, you, Dave, and Jim. You, you obviously all have different roles you're playing, but I'm astounded by everything you've stepped up to do in the last three months. The, the content on the YouTube channel, it's honestly gotten Scott and I through this period of time. Mm -hmm. And I am, I'm amazed by how proactive you've been and you're clearly the leading of the Holy Spirit is in all three of you in terms of how to, you know, like you said, it's not the church. I mean, the church is not a building and right. all these, and what is the church? And I loved when you were talking just this weekend about separate versus contrast. That helped me a lot mm -hmm. in that we can't be separate and I'm trying to be a contrast as best as I can. And then, so that's, that's that with you guys, but also um, Frank, Franklin Graham. Mm -hmm. And I have just learned to really appreciate him and his servant heart and the pop-up hospitals and everything. They've been proactive in what yeah. they're doing and they're, they're just out there. Yeah. And so I've, I'm listening to a lot of his teachings and actually Billy Graham, they're giving us a lot of his teachings, even from say the sixties or the seventies. Yeah. I saw and that's been fun. Up on YouTube the other day. There was yeah. some really old ones and I enjoyed kind of looking. Yeah. At them. yeah. It's so, it's so timeless. Right. So sure. his, he was talking about unrest in the sixties and seventies mm -hmm. and one of them I was listening to. And I, wow, here we go. Here we are. You know? Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, here's another one. Um, a favorite vacation spot? Oh, that's super easy. We have a place at Priest Lake, Idaho. And I've been, my parents started camping there with us in the 60s. We bought a place in the early 70s. We're there every single summer. Mm -hmm. All of our extended family meets there. It's absolutely my happy place. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So this yeah. one kind of goes with that, but um, a favorite summer pastime so something to do over the summer yeah pretty much hanging out at priest yeah. on the dock and mm -hmm. watching sunsets and having lots and lots of family over there and enjoying my my two daughters rachel and sophie have lots of cousins scott has a big family we have a big family so those family times kind of sitting on the dock of the bay there oh yeah you know awesome. hanging out that's awesome Great. So, and then yeah. one more. So one more would be uh, one person who has really changed your life. And you've kind of talked about some of the people in your story, but who's one person that has had a real big effect on your life? So it has to be two people. It's my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And I love them both so dearly. And they have been through tough times in their life, but an incredible role model they both are for me. And 
I appreciate them more and more. Mom's been very involved in the church and the care ministry over the years. Dad's been in Gideon's for, I don't know, 20 or 25 years in his retirement mm -hmm. and on the mission commission with the church and things. So I look at them as, wow, they're, they're both going to be 85 this summer. I'm so blessed to have both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we are so blessed to have moved back to Spokane to be with mom, dad, and my brother Amos mm -hmm. and my sister Carol. Yeah. And, but mom and dad are all about how am I going to spend my next 20 or 25 years? Yes. Huge role models for how I, I want to be someone who glorifies God my next 25 years if I can. Yeah. Lord willing, I guess. So. Well, amen to that. I mean, your, yeah. your parents have, they're long time members of our church and really have, have helped to build this uh, body into who we yeah. are. And I'm incredibly thankful for their, their uh, service and their, um, their goodness to our church it's yeah. uh yeah so i i agree <laughs> you're here <laughs> huge um, huge role model so yeah. for yeah. me yeah well kathy thank you so much for doing this i uh i really believe that people will be blessed by this conversation and hearing your story and uh and what an amazing thing it is to be able to hear how god has shaped uh the lives of one another so thanks again for doing this thank, thank you thank you for doing this i really appreciate it so. Awesome. And uh, to all of you who are watching, thanks for tuning in. Um, we'll be back next week with another Testimony Tuesday. But in the meantime, make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, so you don't miss any of the great stuff going on, all the online content that we're doing uh, for Southside. And as we always are saying during this time of COVID and unrest, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit.